Hi everyone, Carolyn here. Welcome back to Encounter Encouragement. Tonight I want to talk about how to overcome a difficult situation and find the good even in the midst of the horribly bad. We're going to go back a few years and I've alluded to this before. Um, 28 years ago I was, well, yeah, 20 some years ago anyway. My uncle had passed away on a Saturday and his visitation was going to be on Wednesday and the funeral was going to be on Thursday and I was actually kind of excited about the situation because I knew all of my family members were going to be attending the funeral or the visitation and I was going to get to see everybody and as I've said before I come from a big family. We were five boys and five girls and two parents at the time. <clears throat> We were kind of spread out a little bit, and so I didn't get to see everybody very often. So this was going to be a way that I was going to get to see everybody. And I was happy about that. At the visitation, I got kicked in the gut like none other. Um, my aunt, whose husband is laying there in the casket, had to tell me that my 26-year-old brother had passed away. He fell asleep while driving, and he hit a semi head on. And I pretty much lost it. I pretty much lost it. This began the week from hell. That was a Wednesday. Thursday was my uncle's funeral, and we really, we didn't think about my uncle very much, sad to say. All we could see was a foreshadowing of what a few days was going to bring for my brother. Um, Friday was my little sister's birthday, and she was supposed to have followed my brother from Wisconsin back to Minnesota for my uncle's funeral, but was unable to due to circumstances. Um, it was also my older sister's graduation from nursing school and her open house at my apartment. Saturday was sort of a day off, if you can call it that. Sunday was my brother's visitation and the one year anniversary of his wedding reception. On his casket, we had a picture from his wedding reception and his high school graduation picture. On Monday, we buried my brother on another sister's birthday. It was the week from hell. But it was also a pretty horrible five, six months. Because not only did my uncle die, not only did my brother die, both in August, in October my aunt down in Houston died, in January my dad died, and in February, exactly four months after his wife, my uncle in Houston died. Five family deaths in six months. And one of the girls that I worked with at the time, she, I was sitting at work one day, this was after my brother had died, and we hadn't even been talking. I was on break, she was running back and forth working, and she looked at me, she stopped. Carolyn, how do you do it? <laughs> do what, Diana? What are you talking about? Your brother's dead, and you seem okay. I said, well, Diana, there's three things. I said, one, my brother's dead. There's nothing I can do to change that. I may as well accept it. Two, he's in a far better place than I am, and I can only look forward to that. And three, I asked God for peace, and I guess he gave it to me. The crazy thing is I hadn't even thought of those answers, the question never even dawned on me. And yet, immediately, those three things came into my head and I was able to formulate that answer without have ever having thought about it. This is how I overcame that horrible tragedy. I asked God for peace. And I came to grips with reality. Now, I'm not saying I didn't grieve because, boy, did I ever, and 
even now, 28 years later, I, I still sometimes get choked up about it. Sometimes I can tell the story with not an emotion at all. Other times, I just lose it. And I never know when it's going to be. But I ask God for peace. And I also prayed and I asked him, God, you are not the author of death. You know when every single one of us is going to die. Our days are numbered. You've got them written in your book. But Satan is the author of death. And you are in control, God, not Satan. So I ask you to kick him in the teeth, knock him out of this situation. He has no business in this family. And I ask you to use my brother's death for good in our family. Let his death not be in vain. Let something good come of his death. And I guess that's one of the things that you have to do, is you have to figure out what is the best possible outcome from this horrible, horrible thing that could happen. What horrible thing have you been through that you want something good to come out of? Remember, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Ask. Ask God to give you something good out of whatever the situation is that you're dealing with. He is faithful. He will take care of you. And I can say that he did that for me. Because I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that more than one life has been saved because of my brother's death. I've told the story about what happened multiple times to multiple people over the years. Twice, the same person came back to me and said, Carolyn, oh my gosh. I, uh, I remembered your brother the other night. I thought about him because I was driving home and I was so close to home, but I was so tired and I wanted to fall asleep and I started swerving and I remembered your brother and I pulled the car over and I got out and I ran around the car a few times and did some jumping jacks and I jumping up and down and getting some cool air, fresh air on my face. And I was able to make it home. And that person said that happened to them more than once. And another person also told me a very similar story that they knew they weren't going to make it home. And they knew if they tried, it was going to be a sad story for their family. So they stopped, pulled over, slept in the car for however long and was able to then continue on safely. So in talking about overcoming a horrible situation, you have to remember to ask God for peace. Ask him to wrap his arms around you and just hold you any time and every time you need it. And you might need it for no apparent reason, but you'll have not if you ask not. So ask. And in terms of finding the good in a bad situation, think about how to prevent this horrible situation from happening to somebody else and ask God to use it to help somebody else. Whether you know about it or not, it can happen. And even if you never know that it happened, God can make it happen and it can save somebody else and it can help somebody else in a different situation. So remember, ask and you shall receive. I hope that this story helps somebody out there tonight because I know it's helped some others already. But I want my brother Richard to have a legacy of continuing to help people. And I don't want his death to be in vain. So I hope that this helps somebody else again and again and again. And I hope that you now have a way to ask for what you want in your situation. Remember to ask. 
thank you for listening. I appreciate you letting me pour my heart out. And I hope to see you again soon. If you have any comments or situations that you need a little help with, I'm here. All you have to do is leave some comments below. I look forward to seeing you again. And until then, be blessed. Thanks, y'all.